Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, Tony Blair once referred to it as a gravy train for lawyers. Since then, legal aid in England and Wales, which pays for people to be represented when they can't afford to pay for a lawyer themselves, has fallen victim to the acts of successive chancellors. Lawyers are now warning of a crisis in the criminal justice system, with more and more people forced to rep them, represent themselves in court, and a legal profession so poorly resourced it cannot properly function. This week, criminal barristers announced they would escalate action that's already seen a majority of them refusing to take on any new legal aid cases because of the row over a new fee regime that came in in April, as Ellie Price reports. My name's Danielle Manson. I'm a criminal defence barrister and the criminal justice system is in crisis. I grew up on a council estate. I'm at the very start of my career and I'm not earning a, a great deal and I, I didn't expect to at this stage, but for me, looking forward, looking to the future, there's a big question mark over whether or not I'm going to be able to continue in this profession. There are an estimated two and a half thousand criminal barristers who practice in England and Wales. Like Danielle, the vast majority are now, in effect, on strike. They're not taking on any new legal aid cases. That's the people who can't afford their own defence lawyers. The final straw has been changes to the way lawyers get paid by the state for these cases. But for Danielle, it's about more than that. The justice system is in very real danger of having its credibility and um, its reliability eroded. And I think ultimately this criminal justice system that we have is a safety net, not just for defendants. It's not just about defendants, it's about everyone. My name is Stephen Davies. Um, I'm a young criminal legal aid lawyer for Tucker's Solicitors. I'm 26 years old and I've spent approximately £60,000 in the last five years um, towards my undergraduate and postgraduate courses. I've been working in legal aid for a couple of years now and uh, the salary for criminal legal aid ranges from about minimum wage up to about £20,000. The Law Society says in five to ten years' time there simply won't be enough criminal defence solicitors in several regions of England and Wales. It blames the recruitment crisis on working conditions and pay. Although not part of the so-called strike, the Law Society is taking the Ministry of Justice to the High Court later this year over cuts to legal aid and changes to the way payments are linked to the amount of evidence in a case. The last time barristers took action was in 2014. Four years on, the Criminal Bar Association says prisons, courts, the police and probation services are underfunded and in chaos. And the criminal justice system must ensure that the guilty are prosecuted and convicted and that the innocent are not prosecuted or if they are, they are acquitted. There is a real danger that innocent people, we've seen it, are at risk of being convicted of things they did not do and guilty people walking free and that is not in the interests of justice and that's a threat to the rule of law. And you think that is happening now because of these cuts? I think there is a real risk that our system has reached that stage. Lawyers say cuts have led to people not being represented properly and they haven't taken the action likely and know the consequences are already being felt. One tweeted, Judge in Cardiff Crown Court sent an unrepresented defendant to prison for five years today. The defendant wanted representation but couldn't find a qualified advocate to represent him. Another wrote, Several emotional and confused defendants at Wood Green today, one begging in court for representation. It goes against all my instincts to sit by and watch vulnerable people struggling in the criminal justice system, but we have been left with no choice. There's also concern about the state of the courts themselves. A lawyer in Luton Magistrates two weeks ago said... All trials listed today have been cancelled. This is because the courtrooms are too hot and the cells too cold. A situation that's been going on for months. And finally... Jury sent home today. Crown were due to open case. The reason, I hear you ask, the roof fell in. The Conservative chairman of the Justice Committee told me they'll hold a hearing on the issue in the coming weeks. Total public expenditure in this country is £809 billion. 
the whole of the Ministry of Justice budget is £7 billion, and that's including all the prisons, the promotion. Legal aid is a tiny fraction of that. It's a fraction of a fraction. So it doesn't actually take a huge amount of money in the overall scheme to put this right. The Ministry of Justice says it worked closely with the Criminal Bar Association when designing the new fee scheme, and the reforms mean serious cases like murder and terrorism will receive greater levels of funding. But the government's drive for better value for money for the taxpayer has come at a price. It's just gone 11.35. You're watching The Sunday Politics. Well, listening to that film was the Ministry of Justice Minister Lucy Fraser, who's in the studio with me now. Thanks for coming in. That's quite a frightening picture of what's going on out there in the justice system that was painted by that film. Uh, well, that film covered a number of points um, and it's important to address each of them. I and mean, if we deal with the strike, um, it's very interesting, and it was said at the end of that clip there, that um, originally the reason a new scheme was put together for barristers' fees was because the Ministry of Justice and the bar recognised that the old scheme didn't work. So in, under the old scheme, barristers went to court for a hearing, a second day of a trial, and they didn't get paid. So we worked really hard with the bar. For two years, the leadership of the bar, that is uh, the Criminal Bar Association, uh, the Bar Council, the circuit leaders, worked together with the Ministry of Justice to put together a new scheme. When that scheme was consulted upon after two years, it was welcomed by the leadership of the bar, who said this was a significantly improved scheme to the well, old say, one. They say and it's that more is rational, the, the structure of it they agree with, but they say there simply isn't enough investment in it to make it work, and that's why they've been forced to reject your proposals and take this action. Well, on the money, the, um, there was a £9 million put into it more during the course of the consultation, so they did say that not enough money was put into it, and we put in £9 million more um, at the end of the consultation than at the beginning, and in that scheme as and well... Say, and they say it's still not nearly enough. Well, if I, could, if I just finish up, as well, we think it's going to cost us £9 million in addition to the first £9 million. so that's £18 more million pounds, um, into the scheme. But you've left lawyers, young barristers earning an average of £12,000 a year, some of them putting in so many hours that they're not actually earning minimum wage as they're doing this job. Talk about having to actually pay to work. We saw some tweets for some barristers there. There was another one that said, yet another day of paying to work. She paid £63 in a train fare to get to court, but the defendants had all found themselves back in Romania, and she got paid £46.50 for the day. You can't expect lawyers to it's work It's absolutely that. right that barristers, as uh, everyone, must get paid properly for the work they do. And the new scheme will ensure that junior barristers get paid more than they did before. So when we put in the £9 million extra, it went to junior barristers. The figures actually show that, on average, barristers earn about 50 thousand pounds but it is absolutely right that they get paid properly and just to well, pick well, up they, they wouldn't be taking this action which they say they're not taking lightly and with a very heavy heart if they thought that you were remunerating them properly and it's not just about lawyers pay and we'll move on to some of the other issues in a minute but you say you've put nine million pounds extra and they clearly don't think it's even close to enough or they wouldn't be doing this well we did promise to review the scheme in 18 months so what we said was let's see how this scheme works and if there are still issues absolutely we will look at them and we have we have uh, repeated that commitment that we will look at this in 18 months. We want to, I was at the bar, I was at the bar for 17 years. I think it's an absolutely essential profession and I think the independent bar does a fantastic job for those it represents. So we want to see a, a system that works, we want to see young criminal but, barristers but, yes, coming through that system. this is what they system. say, the system isn't working. It's not just because of what lawyers are being paid, it's because it's how it's funded generally. You've got, even the Public Accounts Committee said that the criminal justice system is close to breaking point when they looked at it. The Conservative MP chair of that committee said we've now removed more from, than the system can take and we should rectify those anomalies as soon as possible. And you've got a really senior QC there, Angela Rafferty, saying people who are guilty will walk free and people who are innocent will go to jail because the system isn't funded properly. You were a QC yourself, you were at the bar for years, you must be frightened of that happening. So people have raised issues and I take those very, very seriously. But just to come back to the figures, we spend £1.6 billion pounds on legal aid every year. Uh, that's a significant amount of money, that's a fifth 
of the Ministry of Justice's budget overall. And we are actually in the process of spending a billion pounds, in addition to that, on our courts and tribunal system, making and upgrading our system. Forty percent, and it's left people in magistrates' courts and, 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 and people even facing Crown Court trials who've got um, more than um, a certain amount in assets, more than £8,000, having to, who often cannot afford to pay for their representation. That's quite apart from this strike. We hear stories all over England and Wales of people turning up at court and they simply cannot afford to be represented. So, number, so 99 per cent of people, uh, over 99 per cent of those who apply for criminal legal aid get it. In the Crown Court, so, not in the Magistrates So in, in relation to any changes that were made uh, in relation to uh, legal aid in the last legislation in the coalition government, criminal legal aid uh, stayed the same pretty much. Uh, and some people do choose to represent themselves. Uh, we did a report recently and it said there isn't a significant, in fact there's not much of a change in, in people who aren't represented in the Crown Court. Can I just say, I mean, we are spending a lot of money on our system. We are trying to bring our uh, court system, our justice system up to date. So with what, technology... So, so, that, so that trials aren't stopped because the ceiling has fallen in? So we spent over £100 million. Pounds. So we, ha we own uh, or, or run 350 courts and tribunals across the country. Of course there are going to be issues in relation to maintenance. And of course it's unacceptable um, if cases don't uh, go ahead. But we spent uh, over £100 million pounds in 16-17 on maintenance. And recently, because issues were pointed out, um, we put in a further £5 million, uh, that people could identify what that five million uh, should be spent on. I'm very keen that people do identify issues uh, that so arise you, so and we will there, look there, at them. There are problems in the criminal justice system and there are problems that money needs to be thrown at to in order to rectify. There, there are issues in our criminal justice system as there are in our civil justice system. We can always improve it, but we are doing that. So one of the things that we launched last week was an online uh, divorce scheme where people can now apply online uh, for their divorce. Uh, people, people who, you know, uh, citizens, uh, people are using that system, uh, which they say are significantly improving it. We've got a common platform where we're aligning documents for the police, the CPS, uh, council judges. Uh, we're trialling this so we can um, make the system better for everybody. All right. Well, Lisa Fraser, thanks for talking to us. Thank you.